because this is a free event, we've been asked to, uh, to post this online or, or put it up on YouTube after the fact, because I think this is a topic that is of interest to a lot of people that weren't even able to make it this morning. So um, just a heads up that that is currently being recorded. Uh, and welcome, everybody. And, and one more time, big apologies for that Zoom info getting messed this morning. But going forward, we learned our lesson, so we, sh we should be good for future meetings. My name is Adam Rich. I get the esteemed pleasure of leading our technology special interest group here in 2020. Um, I work for Athene as a training consultant, which is essentially a, a e-learning designer. And this is a topic, this animation 101 is a topic that I'm pretty passionate about. Uh, and I love, love, love making these type of videos. So really cool to be able to share that uh, with everybody today. Um, and then I also have a partner in crime for today's event, and that is Melissa Nichols. So I'll, I'll give it to Melissa here for a second to uh, introduce herself. Morning, everybody. Um, I, he just told you my name. I am a talent development business consultant for Ariane. And what that means is I do a whole lot of things, but this is my favorite part of what I do is get to do the instructional design stuff. And today's my three year anniversary. I can't believe it. So it's exciting. Yay. Woohoo. Thanks, Jenny Lilly. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks, Melissa. So let me, I'm going to uh, share my screen. Uh, what I would ask is that while we are presenting, uh, just some housekeeping stuff is um, to, to, to mute your audio uh, if you can. And then um, we'll use the, the chat feature as well um, throughout this. So if you have questions or, you know, you have conversation uh, that you want to add, um, definitely use the chat to do that and, and we can make this a nice collaborative experience. As I'm doing my thing, Melissa will be monitoring the chat for questions that come up. And then while um, uh, I'm doing my thing, Melissa will, will monitor that. I might have said the same thing, but basically we'll be looking at it uh, to make sure that it, everything is good. Um, our plan today, uh, first of all, I guess everybody able to see my screen right now? Thumbs up. Perfect. Um, so the plan today, just to give you an idea of kind of what we're, what we're about. So four things or three main things that we want to accomplish this morning. So about 15 minutes or so, we'll, we'll talk about kind of the animation basics. So getting started with using animated video in your training or talent development projects. We'll then pivot and I'll hand it over to Melissa and she'll go about 15 to 20 minutes or so to give you a demo of a program called Movely that she's very familiar with and uses to create animations. And then she'll hand it back to me and I'll do the same thing with a demo of Beyond, which is a program I've used for about five years or so. And then um, if we have time at the end, we'll do a quick preview of July 2020. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's do that quick preview now because it's very quick. Um, July is going to be an extension of this. So I think for me, the, the reason that I got involved with the tech SIG is there is a, a ton of power in, in collaboration and um, and just seeing what's going on within the talent development community. And this is a great outlet to be able to showcase and share what we're doing however we can. Um, so what I would like to do in July is if you are somebody who uses animated video in your training programs and you have a project that you'd be willing to share or a video that you'd be able to share, I would love to get some, you know, as many examples as we can to basically have like an animation showcase next month. Um, so we can see all the different ways that people are using animation. And then also to go with that some, you know, maybe some background or explanation of why we did what we did and what the result of it was and that sort of thing. So this is a, a little plug for July. That meeting will happen on July 10th. But if you are using animation and you have something you might be able to share uh, a video, just reach out to me, arich at athene.com. Um, I'll, you know, put that in the chat here in a second, but um, just let me know because I would love to get as many examples as we can for July. So with that, let's rock and roll. Um, so to start out with, again, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to chime in or throw them in the chat. We'll make sure we get those answered. Um, but when we talk about animated video, what are we talking about? There's all different types of animation. Um, when I think of animated video, I generally think about cartoons, uh, like the Simpsons or family guy or, or anything like that. Um, and what we've, we've learned in, in L and D and talent development is that there are tons of different uses for animated video. Um, I want to highlight some of the main ones that I think are, are really good places to start. So if you're somebody who 
doesn't currently use any type of animated video in your training programs or somebody that does, um, we can use this time to kind of share insights and collaborate as we go. So these three things I'll talk about with when to use animation are, are ways that I have personally used animated video in my training programs. Um, and I feel like I've had, had a decent amount of success in how those have been received. So the first one is introducing a, a topic or a concept. You might hear these referred to as like explainer videos, but think to yourself about a, um, a topic that is is complex or maybe a little bit difficult to understand or that people in your organization or the business units you support or the clients that you work with, topics that, that, that they struggle with or that are kind of hard to break down, that are pretty meaty. If you can find something that comes off right at the top of your head, that is a prime candidate for an animated video. Um, we, you can use these to you know, introduce anything, I think from, from Nationwide, uh, when I worked for Nationwide Insurance, we had a billing program um, that sometimes our representatives or our customer service representative representative struggled with um, that sometimes it was hard to read and there are some conceptual things about how the billing system worked um, that they struggled with so as part of a, a training redesign Mary was there she could talk about this too uh, is is we created some explainer videos to help break down those concepts so you can take through a voiceover and you know, motion graphics, pictures on the screen, moving about, popping up, moving around. You can, you can break that very complex topic that you could spend, you know, two to three hours just introducing the idea of it. You can break that down in a two to three minute video that accomplishes the exact same thing. And it's also something that is sustainable, um, assuming no business processes change, but that people can come back and reference at a later time. Um, these we've used them at Athene and one of the big things that we struggled with um, or maybe didn't struggle with, but a gap maybe that we had at Athene is how we make money as a company. So Athene, we sell annuities. That's what we do uh, at Athene. So, you know, how do we grow? We've been a rapidly growing company for the last, you know, 10 years that we've been around. Um, but, you know, how does the sale, sale of an annuity actually affect our profitability and our bottom line? Um, and if you went around and asked a lot of people to answer that question, you'd probably get a lot of blank stares. And I can't imagine that that's a unique challenge that exists only at Athene. Um, you know, pretty much any company, when you, when you think about those financial concepts, is, is traditionally a little difficult to wrap your head around. So we met with our uh, finance guys, the, some, some executives within our finance team for about an hour and just said, dump all of the information in your brain about how we make money on annuity sales, dump it to us. And we were able to condense that one hour conversation into a three and a half minute video um, using animation to, to explain and tell that story. So really, you know, when it comes to introducing topics and using explainer videos, this is probably the first thing that I think everybody that is wanting to get started in animation or is currently using animation, this is a great place to start as you're going. The second thing we talk about a when to use animated video um, is to tell a story. So when you think about stories, for me, the first thing that comes to mind is like fairy tales. I'm, I've been side tangent story real quick. Uh, so I, I just recently, I read a book um, or started reading a book about the Princess Bride uh, movie written by Carrie Ewells. Um, and I don't think I'd ever seen that movie, The Princess Bride from start to finish. Uh, so started reading the book uh, and then was like, Oh, I should probably watch the movie. So I watched the movies top to bottom. And now I've got a, now I'm actually reading the princess bride. Um, but when I think about stories, all of that coming back to the point of what I'm trying to share um, is that when you think of stories, a lot of times think about fairy tales. Once upon a time, there is a, there is a king and there a princess or, or whatever. Um, but when you think about using story in animated video, you're really trying to share, you know, what's the beginning, middle and end of this topic. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be only a narrative um, that you're using animated video for. You can you know, tell the story of like that finance 101 uh, that I just was, was kind of mentioning is, <laughs> oh gosh, I'm looking at the chat. I shouldn't have pulled up the chat. That was a bad idea because now I'm all sidetracked. Inconceivable. Um, but tell the story of like finance. So how we make money, how do we start? What's, what is it? What is the, the first thing that happens? Well, you sell the annuity. Well, and then what happens with that money? And so you're linear, linearly or even potentially kind of all over the place telling the story about, uh, 
uh, about that annuity topic. So whatever it is, story is integral to whatever you're doing in animation. Um, I think of another, another way that when I was at Nationwide that probably the favorite, my favorite project or thing that we did that just kind of happened out of the blue was we had a guy who worked in Columbus who was a customer service representative. His name was Chuck. And he, we had a, a social, I think Yammer was the name of the social media site that we were using for, uh, for the company. And Chuck had taken a video of himself, just a selfie video. He put the camera down and told this customer service story about how he helped this guy who needed proof of insurance for his vehicle to rent a car. He was in Las Vegas. He um, couldn't, uh, he didn't have access to email because he was an older gentleman, didn't have email on his phone. Um, so Chuck told the story about how he called the hotel chain where he was staying and was able to get a fax number to, to send it out. Um, really, really cool story. Um, and it was just him, literally just like we're doing today, just him with the camera in front of him uh, talking to his phone. Um, so we took the audio from that story, ripped that audio off of the video, and then I cut out some parts um, that just to tighten up the story a little bit. And then we used Vion to animate what was happening on the screen. And that was something I don't think we'd really ever done before or a technique we'd never really use. But that was a very powerful way to share a story that, that connected and resonated with pretty much any customer service rep or anybody really who's ever taken a phone call from somebody. And that was really just storytelling. That's all it was. The last thing that I would share uh, as well for good, good uses. So when you think about animation, don't necessarily pigeonhole yourself into just like, you know, three minute videos of, of animated stories. Think about how you can use animation to enhance static images. Um, a good example would be, let's say you've got some data to present. Um, you know, let's say your, your company's uh, customer satisfaction was 99%. You could create an infographic with just stat, flat, flat static icons to tell that story. But if you've got access to, you know, a Beyond or a Movely or a Toonly um, or even like Adobe After Effects, um, you could animate that data to maybe, maybe make it pop on or, um, you know, to, to create a, a pie chart and have that 99% animate on. That stuff is, is relatively, you know, like with an After Effects program, it's a little more intense because you have to program all of those things. With the programs that we're going to look at today, Movely and Beyond, you can do that in basically one click. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways that you can use animation to enhance you know, just, just basic plain static images. So I guess I would say to, to kind of think to yourself, you know, if you are thinking about getting into animated video, think about these three, three topics and, and what you have right now on your plate um, or projects that you're working on that you may be able to incorporate something like this um, in there. So three ways to use animation, introduce a topic, tell a story, and enhance static images. So I'll pause for just a second before I move on with what questions uh, do we have about kind of ideal times to use animation? I see Dan, looks like you put a, a question there in the chat. What would you say makes a good animation? So what characteristics, time, method, content, implementation, et cetera? Hold that thought, Dan. We will hit that in just a minute, I promise. We'll talk about, that's kind of the next piece of this is, well, if you're going to make an animated video, what should you do? And we'll hit that here in a minute. What other questions? What doesn't work well? Um, Carol, hold that thought as well. You guys are getting ahead of your, <laughs> getting ahead of ourselves. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second uh, too, along with what, what what works and what doesn't. That's what happens when you get such a brilliant group of people together, yeah. Adam. Yeah, wise man. This what this group is wise. This is great. All right, well, we'll keep trucking along uh, and let's talk about some of those things. So animation basics. So you're going to create an animated video. Um, what should you do? What works well and what doesn't work well? My very first piece of advice to anybody, and this is really just based on my own personal experience. I'm sure there's like loads of research that exists out in the world for things. Um, but regardless of, of what you do, if you are creating an animated video, story should be front and center. So when I'm talking about story, again, we're not necessarily speaking just like the fairy tale or the narrative type of story, although that is one thing you can do. Um, but you're thinking about 
you know, what are the, the logical series of events? What's the beginning, middle, and end? What characters are involved uh, in this or what objects or elements are involved in this? Is there any conflict? What's the resolution to that conflict? You're telling a story from start to finish. And, and I would say probably above everything, you know, your, your script, your storyboard, your logic, everything should follow that kind of storytelling mentality. Oh, my roommate's here. Hold on one second. Ah, sorry about that. My roommate's six years old and she wanted a snack. So that's, that was the big interruption there. Um, whoa. So storytelling, uh, number one thing that, that we want to look at. The second thing I would say is keep it moving. So the ideal time frame for an animated video is three to five minutes. And I would say five minutes is the max. If you can avoid going over five minutes and if you can avoid even going over three minutes, that is, uh, <laughs> Ben's got three of them. Perfect. Yeah, you know, what's good. You know what's going on. If you, if you go over three minutes, that's generally when you start to lose the audience's attention. So if you can keep your video short, I like to say if you're scripting or storyboarding, write it out first, go back and cut out everything except for the bare essentials that you need to tell your story. Um, and that will help you condense it. One of the things that nobody likes to see is the exact same thing on the screen for you know, a minute, two minutes, 30 seconds, whatever it is where nothing is happening. Um, so along with that three to five minute kind of sweet spot for how long the video should be, I would also recommend that every three to five seconds, something is happening on your screen. So take, for example, um, think about your favorite animated, animated cartoon or animated show. That could be a movie, a cartoon, whatever. Um, and if you haven't watched it in a while, go back and watch it and, and focus only on the kind of the, the, the composition of the scenes and what's happening on the screen. You'll see that pretty much every three to five seconds, something is happening. That could be a cut shot. So going from maybe a wide to a close up. that could be a camera movement, could be a character coming on the screen, a character changing up the way that they're moving on the screen. And, and you'll see how prevalent that is. And that's because animation is unique. Um, you can sit down and watch, you know, like a, uh, a talk show uh, or, a, or a late night television show. And you can see an interview where the camera pretty much just cuts between two shots or three shots. There's the two shot of the, of the host and the guest. There's the close up of the guest and the close up of the host. Um, but if you watch a cartoon uh, or an animation, there's, it's much more involved in that it's because it's harder to keep people's attention. So the more that you can keep things succinct, see Cindy popped in there, a good guide, 125 to 150 written words equals one minute of video. Yeah, great, great advice. The more that you can keep it succinct and keep it moving is you're gonna continually hold the audience's attention. The next thing I would say is plan it out. So do everything in your power um, to think through what you wanna do before you do it. And that might seem kind of obvious. Um, I can tell you from experience that if you go to create an animated video or pretty much any video for that matter, and you don't really know until you get in there what you wanna do, it's gonna double, triple, quadruple the amount of time it takes you to put that together. But if you can create even a simple storyboard, the most basic of storyboards of I kinda of want this to be happening, or I think this is what's gonna show up on the screen when the narrator is, is talking or when the character is doing it, even that basic plan goes a long way to, to reducing the amount of time it takes to, to cut a video together. For a reference point, um, I, I'm sure, again, there's probably data out there I should know off the top of my head, but if you, you cut a you know, two to three minute animation uh, and you're proficient in a tool like Beyond or Movely, you might be looking at eight to 12 hours of development time from scripting, recording the audio, animating it and exporting it. I mean, it's a pretty significant chunk of time that you have to dedicate to it. So the more that you can plan it through, the better it's gonna be. And the final thing that I will say before uh, I will hand it over to Melissa is don't forget about sound. Sound is huge when you're talking about animation. So that's not just like the quality of the voiceover or the quality of, of any narration that you have, but that's also, you know, if, you're, if your video is set outside in a park, usually like in real life, you would hear park sounds, right? 
So can we incorporate park sounds into it in, in ambiance? Um, can you put some background music that, that subtly just kind of helps the video along? Um, so not something you necessarily, you're paying attention to, but you're aware that it's there. I can't think of a single video I've ever created that hasn't had some type of audio or, or like background music or sound effects on it. Because if you watch a video that doesn't have it, and then you watch one that does, or even taking back to your favorite cartoon program or your favorite animated movie, and you listen to what's happening just sonically within that, you'll see how well that enhances the overall experience. So these would be just kind of high level, you know, four things when you're thinking about animating a video of, of what works well, what you want to try to avoid, um, and, and all that stuff. So uh, include closed captionings. Great question, yes. Dan. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. For accessibility reasons, for sure, uh, if you can. And there are some programs that will, will caption it for you. Um, you can add captions manually if you need to. If you know a lot about like creating closed captioning files, uh, a lot of times you can create those outside and then whatever you know, you're hosting on or whatever system you're hosting on, you can drop those in there. But yep, very important and to make sure you got those. I think most people, a lot of people use Storyline and Storyline has that a part of that included in it that you can do those closed captions. Adam, I was gonna ask you for your background music, where do you get that from? So there's a couple places. Uh, you can do Ben Sound, B E N S O U N D, bensound.org. Um, I think Zach last month talked about this as well. Um, is a he's got a, a bunch of free tracks that you can use that are um, you don't have to pay for, and then he's also mm -hmm. got some that you can pay a license for. So that's a really good one. Um, I found if you've got an iPhone, you've got access to GarageBand. Oh, Carol, I'll put that in the chat for you here in just a second, um, that bensound.org. But um, an iPhone, you have access to GarageBand, uh, and you can do loops and stuff in GarageBand. You could create a background track. I did a project recently where uh, I used GarageBand to, to create a bunch of background audio to go along with, uh, with the course itself. You've got um, Adobe has a bunch, of, a bunch of free sound effects and loops that you can go out and piece together. You just need some type of, of editing program in order to put those together. Um, oh, thank you, Ben. Yep, bensound.org. Uh, there it is. So there's, there's lots of options. I saw in there, um, uh, I think Dan mentioned, you know, um, kind of mixed response to having background music behind. I, <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a huge advocate of it. I think it adds a lot. Uh, you have to be careful with everybody hears things differently. And also depending on the headphones that people are using, that's going to affect the, the listening experience too. So if you work with a pretty solid set of headphones that have really good sound and you have somebody that, you know, your, your company gave out at orientation, some earbuds that cost, you know, $2.50 for the company to buy, that's going to sound very different than, than what you have. So I think some of it's personal preference, but I, I feel like it's, it's a really important to the, to the overall experience, just making sure that you're balancing and maybe testing it on a couple different headsets um, or having people hear it and, and give you feedback on it or whether or not that's going to work. That's a good point Jackie made To A lot of times we have to look at the licensing agreements to make sure if we have um, the license to be able to use that music. Sometimes you even still, if it's free, have to give credit to the author. So right. good call out there, Jackie. Yep. So that is uh, pretty much all I have. I, I am an open book. And if anybody, you know, after this meeting today wants to chat more about this stuff, I geek out so hard over animated video. Uh, and I am more than happy to have any amount of conversations or, or share examples, um, you know, with how we're using it. And we'll actually, that's kind of a nice transition because we will share a couple examples of some animations um, you know, using Fion and, and Moobly, so you can kind of see him. But, um, you know, definitely reach out. I'm, I'm more than happy to talk. So with that, uh, I will pass the reins over to Melissa, and let's get into some of this system demo. Can you please enable my screen sharing? Oh, goodness gracious. I probably should, shouldn't I? <laughs> Thank you. There we go. All right, you should be good to go. All right. Thank you. So I did a presentation with using Movely uh, and my dog is gonna bark. So sorry about that. My doorbell just rang. Um, I did one of these presentations a while ago when we were downtown and we met and there was some pretty good response about it. And I think people liked it. Um, can you guys see my screen? Thumbs up, Adam. 
Okay, cool. So this is within Movely. Movely is, um, you can look it up online. It's movely.com. Within the editor, there is a lot of things that you can do. As far as pricing goes, we did just get an email actually earlier this week that they've kind of changed how their pricing works. But for the program that we have, it allows you to use things without watermarks or um, and, and gives you access to their library, which is insanely huge. Um, it's 300 bucks for the year. So it did go up a little bit from what it was before, but it gives you that really good there's, there's a lot of different things that you can do in here. So this is my actual um, building screen and it keeps your library for you. You can export these into an MP4 and then pop, pop them into Storyline um, and they work perfectly. That's, we do that with a lot of these because then you can end it and you can put quiz questions in and things like that. Where Adam was talking about telling a story so when I started, I had this vision. One of my questions during my interview was, I'm going to give you this sheet of paper that has what we're using now, that it's two four-hour sessions of in-person training of how to be a manager at our company. And my vision was to have this be this this highway, this management highway that you go down and you learn all these different things. So I used about the first year that I was there to come up with these. There's nine different videos that takes you through how to approve time cards, how to do all these things. And I did use animation for that. And it's, there's characters. There's actually a character in here in this library that um, our company's logo is orange. And uh, it's a, a and this guy, the guy in it has an orange shirt on with an A on it. So he was perfect to use for that. But it's all cartoon-ish animation. And when I think of animation, I think of that first. But this demo that I want to show you that I think Adam's going to, if this doesn't work for you guys to see, Adam's going to put the link in that he did to YouTube as well. But animations, movement, and sound and seeing things happen on your screen to me. So you, you fade in, you fly in, those kinds of things that you're used to seeing on um, PowerPoint or within Storyline. But I just, I did this little video, it's about 30 seconds and I'll, hopefully it'll work that everybody can hear it. No audio, Melissa. Okay. Oh, you told me, what is it that I have to push? So when you enable your screen share, you have to enable your system audio. Hang on, we got it. Okay. Or Let's include system audio. Okay. I forgot that part, darn it. I haven't had enough coffee. Okay, here we go. That's just that quick 30 second thing and you can put your own videos in so you can see over here on the left hand side these are all screenshots or logos or things that i've created there's some signs like this one that i used uh, for that management highway there was a blimp who doesn't like training with a blimp in it there was a blimp in my <laughs> training that flew by on the management highway and then pictures all kinds of things then down towards the bottom you have all your audio. So I use Audacity. There is a record audio in here, but I like the editing capabilities in Audacity. So I use Audacity for my audio. And then you can put your own videos in here as well. So you can do a screenshot or a screen video with snippet or any of those other things that you have and you can save it and then load it in here. It's very, very easy. 
Um, a couple things that I would, if you are going to use this, a couple things I've learned the hard way. Um, you see down here, this has just one clip in it. So when I've recorded audio and you're going from what would be one scene to another or one um, screenshot to another, to, to create a new clip, which you can add or you can name in here, and I just name them clip one, clip two, whatever. And once you have that new clip created, then you can add things into it. So you can just click and drag things over and then see how that added it to this clip here. Um, especially with audio, I've learned that because sometimes we have to make changes to things and change audio, that it's very much easier if you do each audio as its own clip. And I believe this can go, I'm not sure what the limit is. I think it's about a hundred different clips that you can be in here. I've never had more than, I think 10 is the highest number of clips that I've had in here because again, we're just creating these three to five minute videos with this. And Melissa, we had a, <laughs> just a quick question come in. Um, sure. So it, 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 about the library, Cindy asked if, if Movely has, uh, the library includes images and music, and then Ben oh, wanted to know yeah. if, it, uh, if it's purely web-based. It is web-based, yes. Um, as far as, yes, there is music in here. There is a lot of music. There's music, there's sounds. So like Adam mentioned, park sounds. So if you go to sounds and they have really, I've been using this for about two and a half years. They have expanded this so much. It is so wonderful. That's why for 300 bucks a year, this is awesome. But you can go through here and you can, um, this is just the, all the story blocks, they're free. There is stuff in here that you can pay for as well, but I, I use all the free stuff. We don't pay for anything extra. And if I can't find an image here, I just do a Google image and find one that's not a, uh, a stock one, but you can do, I wonder if we can find park sounds, look for park sounds and it'll give you all these different sounds and you can go through a fountain in the sculpture park. Lovely. You can go through it and find what you want. So they also have, which is what I have been using a lot lately is videos. So you have these little videos. Well, this is just park sounds, but if you don't search for anything in particular, you just look at their videos. Um, there's the stock ones or, and the, there's the Getty, all the Getty stuff you have to pay for. Um, but then you can go down to all of these story blocks and it always defaults to city. I'm not sure why. Um, but these are all just little videos that you can put in here that they don't have sound, but you can just pop the video in. It takes a second for it to load. You can uh, preview everything over here, but here's this, this video. That's kind of cool. So you just can add them very easily. Um, you can, if you're gonna put, you can do text over the top and you can choose, there's a bunch of different fonts that you can choose. You can choose the size, you can choose the color. You can put in your own um, numbers for your, your hex number for your color in here. You can choose a color and all these, there's a ton of different fonts that you can do. Some of them, like there's Open Sans is in here now. They just actually added Open Sans. <laughs> it's kind of weird that they didn't have that. And you could, you can make some really, really fun stuff in here. So, Melissa, can you upload your own fonts? That's a question Amanda had. Are you able to upload I believe custom? that you can. Um, I have not done that, but I believe that you can. Um, I did see they have a really good uh, site for help, a help site. Just I know Storyline has their e-learning heroes too. Very similar to that. Plus, I will tell you, um, I had an issue with one of these videos earlier this week, and within an hour, I had a response to them, um, probably because it was early in the morning. I know that their headquarters is located um, somewhere in Europe. I believe it's Denmark. And so 
if you file a ticket with them later in the day, you can't, you don't really get an answer until the next day. But still for some of us that file tickets for LMS or things like that, we know that it takes a while to get back to them. So for them to get back to us sometimes, but uh, with this, their support has been fantastic and they're always willing to help and they can, they can, you can go to the, the help up here and the help center is very helpful to do. So um, I just want to show you guys real quick. Um, so this is some of the other stuff that I've done. They have a lot of short videos in here. Everything's stays. Um, this is one of my favorite videos that I ever did for inappropriate workplace conversations and we use the people. <laughs> but this one um, for PCI are uh, it's the uh, for credit cards. Oh my gosh, privacy for credit, card, credit cards. Um, Briar, who is actually on the call and my teammate, she did this one after I showed her how to do some of the basics in here and she did fantastic. And that just for somebody to do something like that for their first time using this is just, it's so simple. Um, but you can see here some of the people that are the animated folks. If I'm not sure if I click play, if it'll do anything, but there's all kinds of different stuff in here that it saves it for you. You can archive it, you can publish it to YouTube. So when you do your publishing, it gives you the different options. So if you have a YouTube channel, which we don't have a specific YouTube channel, um, but you can publish it to their gallery too. Um, you can download it. I usually do. Oh, that's going to take forever now. Whoops. Um, down, <laughs> download it as MP4. And then you have that MP4 file. But what's wonderful, one of the other things I really love about this is that anytime you can go back in here and edit a project. So one of these that I did, I found um, somebody, it's been out there. It's one of the first ones I did. And it's, so it's been out there for over two years. And about a month ago, somebody emailed me and said, hey, did you know there's a spelling error in here? And I thought, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? How many people have seen this? So I went back in and I was able to do edit project and fix it in a matter of minutes. And the same goes with any of the audio. If you do the audio in those sections, like I told you, you can go in and you can edit your audio. And if you edit it in Audacity or whatever it is that your editing tool is, you just take the one out. You can delete that particular audio. And Melissa, as you're, as you're pulling that up, Cindy had a, a question about transition. So does it have like fade in, fade out, dissolves, Absolutely. you know, those sort of things? Yep. It sure does. So I have to be, you have to be clicked on something, but here's this animation button down here at the bottom and you can have a hand pointing and things like that. I don't ever use that one. It's kind of weird, but um, the, the move and transform, you can move things all over, zoom in. I use that one quite a bit. And then your enter and your exit have, all, have these available to them. And then we also had, Kai had a question as well about, you know, Camtasia, you know, using Camtasia versus using Move, Movely, you know, for mm -hmm. this type of non-linear editing. Are you, do you use Camtasia at all? I do not. I do not use Camtasia. So I would think that, you know, like the, the difference, I don't know if TechSmith has with Camtasia has like a lot of, you know, stock things that you can drop in and whatnot. I mean, I feel like you could probably do similar things, you know, with, with yeah, each program. Yeah, I, I have used Camtasia um, prior to my life that I'm in now. I used Camtasia a little bit. And uh, honestly, Kai, I like this better. It's easier to use it's more, I think it's more user friendly. It's got more options, especially when you're looking at all this media stuff that's in here of all the different things that you can use. So, I mean, there's all these different motion graphics that you can use. There's um, clips of things, there's web icons, there's graphics. And this stuff was not available when I used Camtasia. That's been like, Oh my gosh, six or seven years ago now, but there's all different kinds of things that you can use that are is in here that I haven't seen in other in other things. Sure. And you can always load if you don't want to use. There's a lot of cartoon things in here, but there's a lot of pictures in here as well. And I load up stuff all the time. You saw that big that was my personal library. I load up pictures and things 
all the time that you can use in here. And it's super easy to, you, to do. You just do upload media and you can import it from any of these places or you could, if you save it on your computer, just as a picture, or whatever you can, you can also click and drag it over here if you have more than one screen open. So Melissa, we're about three minute warning or so. All right. What other questions did you guys have? Let me put my trainer hat on. If you have any questions about it, feel free to email me at any time. Melissa.Nichols at Arian.com. A-U-R-E-O-N. And I'm, I'm ha I'll talk about this stuff all day because this is absolutely <laughs> my favorite thing to do. Um, I think sometimes we get bogged down in some of the other things that we all get to be doing. And then I just absolutely love it when I get to go in and do this. I get to work on one all day today and I'm super excited about it. <laughs> Uh, Kai had another question for you, Melissa. Is there one thing you wish Movely could do, but currently doesn't? Oh, good question, Kai. Um, and hi, Kai. Um, I, not that I have found. Um, there's some of the things, like I said, with that audio that I learned the hard way. Um, and then because I've inserted audio and then had to change something or a policy change. So I just had to remove 45 seconds out of the middle of a video. And it was one of the first ones I did. So the audio, it was all within one clip. So I had to then move every single asset that I had after the three minute mark up to the seven and a half minute mark. I had to move every single thing back. So by, use, by clicking on it and pulling it back like this, um, and then I learned that it, it's kind of like when you highlight all your emails, if you do the top one and then click the bottom one that you want with when you're clicking shift at the same time and pull it back, you can do that, which that helped, but they don't always line up exactly how you want them. Um, so that one, that one took me forever to edit. But when it's, when you do the audios in the clips like that, then you just have to move the clip and it moves the whole thing. So it doesn't move. You can just when you're on the clip part, you can move the whole entire thing. You don't have to have to move every single asset that's in it. So that was kind of one of the things that I learned that I learn more about this all the time with every project, but it's, I love it. And Melissa, we have one more question for you. Uh, Dan asks, how steep is the learning curve? So like time to minimum competence to be able to create something. Um, I probably, I, I, I will say I am not a tech person. Um, you said you geeked out on tech stuff like this and that is not me at all. I was excited to learn how to use it. I say, um, depending on how much time you spend in it, I think I had my first one created in less than a week and not doing it eight hours a day, but maybe a couple hours a day. So, and it also depends on who you have to ask questions because I didn't have anybody to ask questions to and y'all have me to ask questions. <laughs> so um, it's not a steep learning curve, especially if you've used something else that's similar like a Camtasia, not a steep learning curve. Sure. Just don't try to create something in here and then try to go in and do storyline and do it the same way and like keep adding audios to the same thing that doesn't work. You have to do new slides in 360, which I forgot about after I went back and used that after I'd used this. So. Cool. All right. Well, thanks guys. Feel free to email me if you have questions. Awesome. All right. So I am going to take over again, but before I go, I have two videos I want you guys to watch. Um, so I'm gonna drop these into the chat and they're really short. The first one is the TechSig teaser video that I created for this month. So uh, some of it may be uh, a repeat for people that have already seen it for anybody else that's new. Um, that's what I'm gonna use as I demo Vyond and show you kind of what Vyond can do and we'll use that as a template. And then the second one is another type of video I created in Vyond that looks and feels completely different than that TechSig teaser. Um, so in the chat, you guys have two videos, uh, one's, one's on YouTube, one will be embedded directly within Beyond. So I would ask again, just mute yourself. Um, we'll give about two minutes or so to go out and watch both of those videos. 
uh, and then we'll come back in and I'll, I'll get into Vion and show you a little bit about how Vion compares to Movely. So I will pause there uh, and head over to the chat, grab those links, and then um, we'll pick back up here in a couple minutes. All right, how'd that go? Good, thumbs up, everybody good? For anybody that I can see video of? Cool. All right, I am going to share my screen and let's have at it. So two very different videos uh, that you saw there. The first one is, uh, the, or the second one rather, the one that the pirate ship introduced the narrative of a uh, a course I built where you essentially were on a journey to become a citizen of this fictitious land. And in, in order to become a citizen, you had to learn how to do this pending requirements review, which is for our, one of our processing teams. Um, so the first thing the learner saw right away was this character like talking directly to them uh, and introducing them to what they would have to do in order to get to the land of pending requirements. Um, but let's dive in and let's look at some of these features. Uh, again, use the chat if you have any questions, uh, make sure we get those answered for you. Um, but the first thing I wanna show you is, is Melissa talked a little bit about Movely and the cost of Movely. Beyond is significantly, uh, to, for, the, for certain plans more expensive uh, than Movely is. So you can see, you know, a professional license, which gives you access to pretty much everything uh, is about a grand, thousand dollars a year. And it goes all the way down to $300 a year. Um, the sadness is you have to have the Vion logo uh, watermarked on your video, which is kind of lame, um, but it does go, you know, you can pay monthly as well. We have an enterprise license at Athene and we pay just under $1,000 a year uh, for each of those seats uh, in that license. But I think that, you know, based on the experience I've had working in Vion, it is, there's pretty much nothing you can't do animation wise within Vion. So it is a very robust tool that offers a lot of customizable features and options for you. But if you know budget is a concern for your organization, Vion may not be the best uh, option for you. But let's dive in and let's talk a little bit about um, Vion itself. Uh, hold on one second, my roommate is back. All right, sorry about that. Uh, Cheeto emergency over here. Um, so anywho, so when you create a video in Vyond, you get access, I think regardless of what your, uh, what license you have, you get access to three different animation styles. So this contemporary style, business friendly and whiteboard animation. The difference between them, it's kind of a stylistic thing for, uh, for your own video <laughs> uh, and what you want. Like the contemporary world is more infographic-y looking the business friendly is more cartoony and the characters look a little bit more real, even though they're cartoons. And then the whiteboard, all every asset in that world looks like it's a hand drawn thing. Um, the good news is regardless of whatever, like if I want to create a video in business friendly, I still have access to the contemporary and the whiteboard animation assets. 
that you can mix and match if you want to. It just kind of depends on, on what you're looking to do. But I'm gonna open up my June Tech Sig video. And so you probably noticed a couple things happening in there. There's some camera movements, there's some you know, motion paths and, and enter and exit effects on certain things. Um, and we're just gonna break down in, uh, in the most efficient way that we can. You know, we could spend hours talking about all the things that Vion can do. But to kind of start out, one of the things I love about Vion is when you go build a video, very rarely do you have to start from scratch. So Vion has a ton of stock templates that are available. So you can see all of these, this, this video, the, the texting video was created in the business friendly world. And you can see each one of these uh, categories has multiple templates in them. So government's got 16, concepts has 60 different templates. And you can see how many of them are available uh, for you to use. And, and one thing that I usually do in, in Beyond is I will start with one of these templates and then I will lift objects and characters out and replace them with things that better fit what I'm trying to do, but at least gives me a starting point. If you wanted to build a scene from scratch, you do have the ability to do that. So if I add a blank scene in here, I can choose a background and we've got locations. So there's 291 locations I can use. There are 58 different patterns. So maybe I want to, I want a backyard is where I want to set my video in. Um, so I could select this one and I just drop that background in and then I could build the scene from scratch by adding, you know, maybe a grill or um, a swing set or something else in there. You've also got, if you are, you know, more wanting to create like a motion graphic type of thing, you can use these patterns. So for example, maybe I like this pattern right here, although I'm not a huge fan of that color. I can go in and I can change the color of that maybe to this beautiful brown. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and so it's really easily customizable, which is, which is super cool. Um, so lots of different options and pretty much you can find whatever you need. I think there's only one instance that I found where you, uh, where I, I had to build a, build a scene completely top to bottom from scratch by importing my own assets. And I think that was a video Mary, you might remember this one that I did at Nationwide about trampoline safety. And I think the premise of the video was like everybody, it was a, somebody narrating a story that was like, I remember, you know, like the kid in the neighborhood that had the trampoline was the coolest kid in the neighborhood. But the whole premise of the video was like trampolines are dangerous and that's why our parents never let us have them. Um, but I had to build my own trampoline and build a bunch of stuff to bring in there to make that work. So, uh, yep, Amanda, I can show you the contemporary style here. Give me just a minute. Um, so in addition to those backgrounds, I'm going to go into this first scene and I mentioned the, the customization that's available. So this, this scene that you see right here, this kind of reception desk is a template. Um, I lifted out all of the characters that were in that original template. I imported the ATD central Iowa logo so I could drop it in there. Um, I added a little computer screen to look like this guy was, you know, typing at the reception desk. And then you'll notice that this character here. This is my custom avatar that I created. Um, every single character within uh, all of these styles has hundreds of different actions, uh, expressions, um, and, and features that you can change. They're all customizable. So if I like, you know, oh, I like this character here, but maybe I want to change her hairstyle, I can just go in and update her hairstyle and then bring that new character in uh, with pretty much just a few clicks. Um, one thing that I what, I, what I had to do when I first started creating this video, I'll show you guys, I'm going to pull in uh, my other avatar and I'll drop, I'll drop him in, uh, make him a little bigger so we can see him. So this is pointy haired Adam. Uh, pointy haired Adam was pre quarantine Adam. Uh, and I realized that as I was making this video, like, oh, I don't go to the haircutters anymore. My wife just like buzzes my hair. So I need a short haired version of my character. So I was able to just go in and change his hairstyle and then drop my new character in here which is super simple. Um, one thing with characters as well is you can, <laughs> it looks just like you, thanks Melissa. Um, you can change, I mentioned their expression, their action. So right now he's got like, a, he just puts his hand on his, on his waist like that. Um, I can go into this actions button here and you can see hundreds and hundreds of different actions that are available. So maybe I want him to, I want him to wave. Um, so you can see I search for wave and you can see all of these different waving options that I have. So maybe I like him like this. I'll just swap him out. Um, if I want to know what that looks like, I can preview it 
and you can just see he'll just stand there and wave the whole time. Um, so really easy to drop those in and out. If I want to change his expression, so right now he's happy, but maybe I want to make him angry. He's an angry wave. I can just change that. And maybe I don't want him to look at the camera. I want him to look this way um, or somewhere, uh, maybe at the back of the screen. I can change him to look left. I can change him to look right. One of the limitations of Vion is that it is a flat 2D animation program. So you cannot like rotate things around. So for example, if you notice, if, if I want my character to look back here at this reception desk area, you can see like it kind of looks like he's pointing that way, but it really just looks like he's, he's looking at, you know, this mirror image of him with pointy hair. Um, I can't necessarily rotate him around. There might be an action that, that I can manipulate it a little bit to make it work. Um, but but really, that's it's kind of one of the big limitations, I think, of Vion is the fact that it is just a flat 2D kind of animation program. Um, I can add motion paths as well on my character. So I'll show you uh, an example of this. So in the second scene of this video, the character walks from screen right to screen left, and then the camera follows him as he walks across the screen. So Vion calls these motion paths, and there's two things that I would need to do in order to simulate the walking effect. The first thing that I would do is I would add that motion path. So what you can see is he's got a 6.875 second motion path um, where he goes from the right side and you can see this little arrow where he lands over here, he stops over here. Um, I can add a delay to that. So the delay is based on this scene down here. It starts at the, let's see, what is that? Starts at the four second mark. So if I wanted him not to, to, to wait maybe two seconds before he begins his walk across the screen, I could add a two second delay on him and then he will hold for a minute and then walk. Um, so the second part of that is to create the walking effect, we actually have to add um, a walking action to him. So what I've got on him right now is this one. And if I preview that, I don't know how well you guys can see that, but he basically just looks like he's walking in place. So there's two things on it. I add that walking effect, and then I add that motion path on it. So those two things simulate that movement from screen right to screen left. At the same time, one of the things I love about Beyond is the ability to uh, animate a camera. So when you think about the camera, it's basically like the camera is you in your eyeballs. So everything around the bounding box of this camera is what's gonna be visible on the screen. And so you can notice with this camera, this darker camera bounding box, this is where the camera starts. So I'm only catching, you know, this left edge. But then I added this camera movement that lasts the entire scene, which in this case breaks my three to five second rule. It's 6.875 seconds. Um, but the whole time that camera just slowly follows him as he walks across the screen. So I have my start point and I have my end point over here. All of this very, very point and click, which is really cool. Um, at the same time, if I want my character, one of the things I like about Beyond is it allows you to do lip syncing. So I want, you know, my character in this video is actually talking to you as the viewer. So I want the voiceover that goes with that character. Uh, I want his mouth to make sure it's moving. And it does a, a decent job. I mean, it's not perfect, but uh, it does an okay job. But I can come up here to this uh, dialogue with my character selected. And you can see I've got this June promo O2.wave audio clip that's on him. Um, and by adding that audio clip directly to the character, that's what helps sync up the mouth. If I just wanted like the voice of God narration to go over it, then I could just come over um, and you'll notice that there are some audio just like Moobly had. There's a, a library of stock uh, music and then there's also a library of sound effects. So they've got 318 sound effects and 123 different background music tracks. Um, but if I wanted to add the ambulance siren, <laughs> I could just click that ambulance siren and you'll notice down here in my timeline, it drops it on a separate audio track down here at the bottom. Um, in addition to that, you've got a, a whole bunch of stock characters that are available. And, and remember I mentioned at the very beginning that, no, I'm good. I'm good on the cheese. thank you. Whoops. My roommate is just crazy. She just keeps coming in. Um, but you'll notice that I, I created this in the business friendly style, but I've got uh, access to the contemporary and the whiteboard character. So uh, for you, Amanda, you'd asked like kind of the contemporary. If I wanted to add a contemporary character into this scene, I can just select that contemporary character area. Maybe I want to add a firefighter for some random reason. And I can select that firefighter. I'll scale him up a little bit so he looks bigger. Um, and we can add him 
directly in there. So what you'll notice, and this is with that kind of infographic-y looking thing, is he doesn't have any fingers <laughs> and his, fe his features are all like rounded rectangles. Um, so it's not quite as realistic looking as, you know, the, the business friendly world is, but all of those same actions uh, on that character, here's all the walking animations, uh, actions that are available, expressions, all of those are all available to him there. Hey, Adam. Yeah. What was your learning curve for this? Because I know you've been using it for quite a while. So you can go in here and go boo, 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 and have this done fairly yeah. quickly. So for those of us that haven't touched it, what's, what's uh, the learning curve, do you think? I, I did a boot camp for, so we have three seats and we've got five people, uh, including me on, on my team at Athene. Uh, and we did a boot camp last week that was two hours um, where I just kind of demoed and went through all of these things and things you can do. Um, but I would say it's probably after your first video uh, in here, you would be proficient enough to keep going. What I found is the, the limitation and the hardest thing about Beyond is knowing what is even there. So you might visualize in your head this really grand idea, but then you might have to try and figure out like, does that exist in Beyond that I can then build? Um, but I think the learning curve is actually pretty, pretty uh, flat. Uh, I think on this because of how point and click everything is. Once you learn kind of the basic features and a lot of the stuff that I'm showing you here today, once you kind of have that down and know what, know how it works, then you can hit the ground running pretty quickly. How's their help and support? Like I've if something's not working correctly. I, I have never had to reach out to their support team ever. Nice. Um, okay. So I don't know if they, what that means, but uh, they also offer a lot of webinars and animation, mm -hmm. um, kind of workshops to show you some of the features. I did one last week that I learned about a feature I didn't know existed. Um, that was really cool. Um, yeah, so it looks like video about 15 minutes long and he said it was pretty, his first took about a day. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's pretty flat learning curve, which is nice. Um, Cindy asked about uh, what the output is. So that's actually a good transition over here. Um, there, before I talk about the output, uh, Melissa talked about Movely and what stuff you can bring in. You can bring in all sorts of file types in here. You can bring in uh, custom fonts, videos, audio clips, images. They, there's a limitation to the size uh, of that. There is no video library that like Movely has that Melissa showed us that doesn't exist in Beyond. Um, it's all just animation uh, and this animated character looking. Um, but I, I imported our, um, our Athene brand font, Avenir. So I just added some text on to it and I can go to that text setting. So I, I added all those custom fonts. Um, you know, you can upload them from here as well. Uh, the last thing with output, so it does output and you have two options. You can do uh, an MP4 at 720 or 1080. Uh, and then you also have GIFs. You can, you can create like a, you know, if you want to animate a timeline or something, you can create a looping GIF uh, in Vion and export that. It takes, depending on the video size, anywhere from like 30 seconds to 15, 20 minutes to process the video before it's available for download. But once that's available, you just download it and then you can drop it into Storyline or you can upload it to uh, you know, like a, a video uh, cloud-based program, something like that. Um, and Kai, you mentioned take a screen capture in Camtasia and then bring it into Vion. I do the opposite. So if you guys remember on the, or if you saw on this clip, or on this video itself, he says like, I'm actually a real life person. And then a split screen happens. I, I animated the base video in Vion, exported it, brought it into Camtasia and, and created that split screen effect in Camtasia. Um, so in order to make that happen, I just created a scene that is, looks like six and a half seconds long. So I just gave some pad in there um, so that I could bring that split screen in. And then I did, you could do that in Vion. Uh, it's just, it's kind of tricky. Um, in Camtasia, it was, just, it was just super simple. <laughs> so that's why I did it that way. Um, so uh, Mary asked a question. I know we're kind of up on time now. Um, so for both Movely and Vion, can you have multiple login emails for one paid account or can just one staff member access the account of time? The answer to that is one person at a time. I could not be in at the same time as somebody else, but um, I'm not saying this is a thing you could do. Um, but it, I don't think it discriminates on like IP addresses. So, <laughs> so that's and, a and thing. For, for Movely, um, we just have one account and both of us have used it. And I believe both of us were in it at the same time a while back. It doesn't happen real often since we don't have all those multiple users. Yeah, Vion does not like that at all. Uh, it will not let you have two people logged into the same account at once. 
So yeah, um, so that's pretty much, I mean, a, a quick down low and down and dirty tutorial um, for Beyond and Movely. I know we're, we're up on time here. I wanna be conscious of everybody here. Um, and uh, Cindy, do you use more than one system, Movely and Beyond, Camtasia and Beyond? Uh, you could do everything, I think, both in Movely or only in Beyond. Um, it's kind of what, like, what do you want to do? And some things you might have a limitation, like that split screen effect. I couldn't really do it in Beyond, so I use Camtasia. You could do it in Premiere Pro or After Effects too, but um, and but yeah. Articulate's loaded a lot of that stuff into Storyline 360 now too. So you've got, they have buku people that you can do and you can do some of that stuff in there um so i've depending on what the project is i've i've used both i've also loaded movely into articulate into 360. Yep. pretty much world is your oyster with these tools which is which is really cool you can do almost anything that you'd want to do so um with that we will we will wrap i want to say again thank you guys for being patient and uh, i apologize again for the snafu with the zoom link uh, but thank you for coming in uh next month i'm telling you if you use animated video in some way shape or form your training programs please reach out to me and let me know if you've got something you could potentially share um and that will be our topic for july is just watching what people are doing and talking about it so with that have a great weekend thank you guys again for coming thanks, in thanks guys um, have a great and weekend hopefully we'll see everybody again on july 10th bye see ya bye y'all